There ain't no laws when you're drinking claws. What's going on, guys and gals, and welcome to Good Real Hunting. We hunt for the good reels, so you don't have to. It's your boy Brad. The Brett Man is right over there. Chris is right down here. It is time, finally, ladies and gentlemen, for us to examine and explore our favorite Mama's Boy and Jason <laughs> Voorhees and everything. That line belongs to Chris down below, so thank you for that. So, like I said, it's time for us to start this Friday the 13th franchise once and for all. We are jacked about it. We're glad that you are here with us, Brett. Hit us with that freaking card, and we will talk about it. We're not going to be alone in this. Uh, our boys Chase Moser is going to be with us. Robbie Sobel is going to be with us. Filthy Dan, the man himself, is going to be joining us. Nick Cooling himself, and of course, House of the Living Dead will be doing a live watch party for Friday the 13th tonight. So be sure to check out these other reviews as well, and join House of the Living Dead here tonight with their watch party. Boys... Are you excited? And I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be on it too. So definitely tune into that first watch along. I take it back. Don't watch it because Brett's gonna be throwing in puns and all kinds of weird ass shit. So, well, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> gents, dude, the time is here. Are you ready or what? I man. am, man. I am fully erect. I could not stand up right now if I wanted to. Because man, if you uh, did, you would probably lean forward a little bit too much, and you would no longer be up there. I'm so, ready to go, buddy. You've been waiting on this one for a while. Man, gentlemen, I am more happier than Jason for he's uh, getting a set of floats so he can go swimming in Camp Crystal Lake. That's what I was talking yeah, about, buddy. Guys. I'm happier That's than right. Ralph with a pantry to party in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, uh, that, that's a fun time right there. Dude, Ralphie boy is a legend. Okay, so let's the get into town this thing. genius. Okay, let's get it straight here. Not the town loony, the town genius. You're all doomed. All it's right, got a death oh, curse. We gotta get some neck stretches in there. Doomed. Doomed. It was part of the casting process is to get someone with like deep neck trenches in there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What's up with his neck anyway in that movie too? I don't know. It's just that's how that's what it was, man. It was part. He of the had a little bit of uh, excess skin. <laughs> Oh yeah. No, it's not it's... kind of did look like a vagina. I knew it was gonna look like something <laughs> in particular. All right, uh Brad, get me to shut up and let's go to our tail of the tape, shall we? Hit us with the movie facts, Bert. Let's... Or shall I say the counselor attributes? I made that up. That's not Ooh, what it's called. I like that. Let's use that. Okay. Okay, Friday the thirteenth obviously came out in nineteen eighty. We're talking the OG today, baby. Six point five out of ten on IMDB. 64 tomato score, 61 audience score, 555. Listen, guys, listen to this. $550,000 budget. That's unheard of. Actually, it's not. Halloween was much less, but that's okay. Uh, at the, it, looking at that today, it's crazy. It's crazy numbers. But look at the stacks it made at $39 million, almost 38. Or I'm sorry, almost $40 million. Uh, of course, directed by Sean S. Cunningham himself. Uh, boys, what do you think about the numbers going in? Man, um, actually pretty damn good for a, um 80s horror flick um especially like those early 80s horror movies uh, i feel like had some of the best scores so i'm glad friday the 13th like because trust me for the horror department uh 64 and 61 i will easily take that yeah I, I, just to uh show <clears throat> the disparity between what 550 grand will get you uh you know in 1980 it got you this movie in today's world it just got uh the opening to 
to, to this review. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that the truth? Yep, that's uh, that's loose change these days in the movie business for sure. Um, I did, but not to say, I mean, I think even today you could make a decent looking movie with that kind of money. I mean, if, if you had some things, you know, if you had some skills, but I, I think it's awesome, man. Uh, the low budget fuel obviously is what gives it some of this charm. So let's, let's freaking talk about this thing, man. Um, I'm excited. Here we go. It's time. It's with Kevin Bacon time. Yeah. Bonus oh yeah. Hour. Let's make some bacon. Hey, don't even get me started on him, buddy. Oh, what boy. do you think, dude? Is he the best looking guy you've ever seen or what? Oh yeah, dude. Easily, still as fuckable today as he was in this movie. Hands you can even down. say he was sizzling. I said it first. <laughs> Jesus oh Christ. well, fuck. Well, you know fuck. what? You are in speech jail, buddy. Okay, y'all go ahead. I'll just sit here. <laughs> no, I think Kevin Bacon was fantastic in this. Obviously, uh, got a little bit of look at the ween uh, in the movie at one point, so mm -hmm. that's always fun. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, overall, I think this movie is fantastic. I mean, I think for the time and everything, obviously, it's a little bit of a ripoff of Halloween and, and whatnot. I mean, I, it doesn't really feel like Halloween, so I never really got that sense, but that's what they were going for. Or Michael Myers takes a camping trip. Yeah. Yeah, man. <laughs> totally. I mean, uh, I mean, overall, the atmosphere in this thing is fantastic. It's got one of the best atmospheres in the Friday the 13th franchise. The, the best camp feel that we get throughout the whole thing, I think, in my opinion, mm -hmm. this and the second mm -hmm. one, uh, which we'll get into again. And, uh, and it looks great. The water is good. It looks nice and juicy. And it just makes me want to get up in there, man. And uh yeah overall i think it, it 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 goes a long way some nice shots of the of the lake pre-storm stuff like mm -hmm. that just really soaks you in the air and i i dig it for that it makes you want to go and party especially with the amount of grab ass that goes on in here i found myself <laughs> asking several times how much grab ass can one group of teens play you know what i mean well when uh, your boy when your boy ned's around dude it's <laughs> it's quite a bit <laughs> oh my god sit on it oh uh, fucking <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh man, shoot! The weed it's just... is one of my favorite segments in the whole thing. That's yeah, that's going on a different list I have here. Oh yeah, <laughs> which, oh we'll talk talk about that too. Uh, yeah, uh, great environment, great mood. As Dave McRae always says, mood and atmosphere because he's Mister Mood and Atmosphere, and he could even agree with this movie having great mood and atmosphere. Like especially when it hits the dark time. You definitely feel uneasy with every camera angle. And that's also what I want to talk about, too. Uh, the lighting and the camera work were so damn good. Uh, and it's and it just frustrates me because that's a lot of a problem with today's uh, cinematography. Because uh, they got all this great technology, but like camera placement and all that, it just sometimes frustrates me. They need to watch this movie because this movie tells you how to do it right. Right, you are, Ted. I think uh, overall, uh, the, what you said about the lighting is spot on. I think it feels natural in this movie for the most part. Mm -hmm. It doesn't feel like it's you know overblown with lighting and things like that. Like you get some really nice, moody, dark shots, especially uh, towards the end once it starts raining and everything. And I, I really like that. Yeah, man. I'll just uh, echo what you guys said. <clears throat> I love it. Love this movie for a long time. It was uh, kind of my. Uh, uh, entry into the horror genre as a as a young boy as a youngin, uh, and I gotta say, man, shit holds up. You know, it's not quite <laughs> as scary as it used to be, right? I mean, it doesn't have mm -hmm. that same effect anymore. But uh, I definitely think that it's still, um, you know, it's still it's still as creepy. It still gives you that feel. You know, um, the twist is not really, uh, you know, it's not like it used to be or anything like that. Yeah, because like yeah, back then it was a big like it was a big fucking deal that yeah. uh, Pamela Voorhees was a um, killer because there were hardly any female killers, um, like to well, my knowledge. Yeah, and and the big twist at the end and all that, you know. I mean, I'm sure in the, in you know in 1980 it was probably like a big you know what the fuck moment. And today mm -hmm. it's just kind of like, you know if this came out today people would shit all over <laughs> like, well that's the laziest fucking thing. <laughs> You know, but yeah, as I had to she get Steve Christie up there when he did his epic reveal of he's dead. And why is she wearing a sweater in the middle of summer? Who knows? I just don't know. There's a oh lot gosh. of questions. I just thought of this. You know how Steve Chrissy like fell in and doing the whole swing with the knife in there? Oh, yeah, he did. It's such a fucking ripoff from, from Halloween. What are you talking about, dude? He did oh, the, it with yeah, the, the thing where Bob, like, where Bob was, did but the whole Bob swing. Bob didn't have that POV shot, Bert. This one is a, it's a, it's a, it's a, 
It's a first. It's a you're looking in. It's a it's a reindeer have antlers. Okay. Anyway, so moving on to the uh, to the Pamela herself though. I thought she was pretty solid though. Yeah. Oh yeah, yes. Becky Palmer. Yeah, absolutely, buddy. Yeah. Uh, and the big note I have on here is she is the absolute best performer in the entire franchise, in my opinion. Oh yeah, she yeah she wins the fucking creepy award, dude. That broad is terrifying. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, man. I, I can get behind that. I, I I had this friend named Brian when I was a kid, and his mom, uh, now watching this now, this kind of takes me back to that. And I'm like, she was probably a serial killer. <laughs> she reminded me a lot of Betsy Palmer. You know, you just like you would go over there and she would be like, uh, hey Brian, honey, you want a bowl of cereal? And then all of a sudden it's like the Chris. <laughs> would you like a bowl of cereal? You know what I mean? Like, real, just super creepy. I'm like, you know what? Don't even worry about it, dude. Fucking rat poison and arsenic in there. Eat it yourself. Have you ever heard of a boy named Chris? He drowned in this cereal. I was the cook. He wasn't a very good swimmer. Have you heard the news? The boy drowned around here in a bowl of milk. I I don't even know where I was. That sounds like Fatty Arbuckle. (laughs) Speaking of Fatty Arbuckle, what about that guy? (laughs) <laughs> what about that guy at the beginning of the movie that uh, plays a little grab ass with the new uh, with the new counselor coming in and uh, oh, yeah, buddy, oh Barry it gives you gives you a little uh, boost yeah, up whatever I call him oh, yeah, that, no, that guy yeah yeah, uh, he's yeah such I a love that dog. it starts off with that moment it's just like ah oh, kumbaya you know they're like they're jamming they're eyeballing each other the whole rest of the camp yeah. is like milk and honey on the other side are these two go, do, like what's gonna happen and then yeah. they're just like oh cool here's somebody else take the guitar and they're all like hey let's keep por- partying to brendan and john go fuck you know yeah, yeah barry and claudette to open it i'm glad they got slashed out you know right out of the gate because they that was kind of a uh oh we weren't doing anything doing yeah you were screwing in my barn or wherever they were or in the shed or yeah. Get out of my barn! Yeah, that was that was uh, that was a moment to open things up with. I thought it was interesting, though. I mean, it was a cool little opening uh, at the end of the day. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, the kumbaya thing really puts me in the mood to get slashed. Anyway, the Did you guys uh, know the original title was "Homemade Jorts and Long Socks." <laughs> that's what they. Yeah, that's still the subtitle, isn't it? Oh, is it really? I'm out. Yeah, you're probably. I think you're right. Yeah, in oh. some countries, I think that you know they took it out only for the U.S. Really, it's still called that in Canada. Yeah. Kind of like uh, paint houses. But, for, uh, uh, yeah, can I uh, go like for Betsy Palmer? Like, can we just talk about the um, iconic speech? Uh, since we were kind of like making fun of it with Chris um, drowning in some cereal, which is pretty damn sad. But um, yeah. uh, I'm just saying, Chris, uh, uh, it's sad. <laughs> no, uh, no, just man, uh, I can't remember what her name was. It was like uh, Claudia, <laughs> Miss Claudia, oh, <laughs> serial killer for sure. Yes, oh, uh, big, and big, when you, uh, serial killer or serial killer? Oh my God, Brad, that's my job. <laughs> yeah, what are you doing stepping on his toes, dude? Yeah, what the Sorry, fuck? What fuck? Jesus but, Christ. Um, but no, anyways, guys, that iconic speech where uh, like, she looking at Brenda's body and goes, oh, I died so young. Have you ever heard of a young boy drown? Um, all those, oh, the two counselors were making love, weren't paying it. Oh, just a speech? Like, Damn, like that was the best thing of the whole entire movie, like acting wise, and just her facial oh, expressions alone really mm-hmm. fucking sold that scene. It still creeps me out to this day uh, watching it because it just draws me into her character. Yeah, man, oh, yeah. She, she like I said, she wins the creepy award. She fucking nailed it. Nailed it. Yeah, I, she does, man. That's why the, the the last little part of this when she shows up is fantastic, and and I don't think it's probably actually her. Uh, doing this but a part of her character that i really enjoyed in the movie was whenever uh your girl brenda is laying in bed reading a book and then you hear the help me mommy help me and uh oh, yeah. <clears throat> the little child mimic noises i thought that was great that was all it was actually him. yeah i mean it was creepy as hell man like that was one of the parts of the movie that or the whole franchise that actually kind of gets into your head a little bit i think i think that was pretty awesome mm-hmm. at the end of the day and that's something i didn't notice until recently honestly like i i've seen the movie hell of times but it's just so yeah, i mean it's such a quiet kind of thing and it, it i mean that's awesome it, it's creepy as hell and uh no chance i would be going out there to help anybody in those conditions i don't think <laughs> yeah hard pass buddy i'm like <laughs> don't fuck yourself and your mom you know <laughs> sadly 
Uh, but, but yeah, but again, there's just... also, uh, I'm sorry, Bert. I just I was still talking about these little things that she was doing throughout the movie. At least her character was doing, and uh, like you you know, after uh, your girl, she's singing in the mirror or whatever. She's talking to herself in the mirror or whatever. Yeah, uh, Marcy. Marcy, yeah, she's doing that, and you see uh, Pamela's hand yes. uh, on the curtains in the back. I thought that was a nice little sequence as well. Another nice little thing where you don't see too much, but it's just enough to kind of be like, "What's going on back there?" That's kind of creepy. And mm -hmm. there's another great shot when Ned was about to go back up. He's he's creeping. He's like he's giving it a little spizies on the guys making love over there by the water. Kevin Bacon and his girlfriend they were over there hanging out, <laughs> about to go yeah, about one, to two. go, yeah, about to go get it on. And he's like, "Oh man, I'm jealous. I need myself a lady." And then he looks up in the in the cabin and he sees uh, a silhouette up there. You can't really tell who it is. I mean, you can kind of see now on these Blu-rays and stuff that it's kind of, okay, that looks like it could be Pamela. But in general, it's a silhouette. It's a nice little creepy shot. And she turns around and goes back in and he's like, what's going on? He falls again, not in any circumstance. Would I be like, ah, oh, this person uh, looks familiar. I'm going to go hang out with them. I would be a little bit more weirded out about it. But uh, I, again, it was, a, it was a creepy little sequence there. Oh yeah, most definitely it was. Um, and I was wanting to watch this on VHS, but unfortunately my VHS broke, so um, I didn't get to experience it. Because, like, I kind of with you with the newer technology, uh, we probably, it was a clear picture. We possibly could have seen it. But imagine watching this movie in 1980. That scene could have really creeped you out. Yeah, man. I mean, it still it still does to an extent, but, like, even at that point, yeah, I mean, you'd be, you obviously you wouldn't be able to tell anything based on just that mm -hmm. alone. And again, that's just camera work too, like putting the camera in a certain direction and um, like blending in the shadow with the figure and all that. It's great. Yeah, it's great creativity for having such a low budget, like doing what you can with what you got. And I think that's great. And in general, the camera the camera work was pretty solid in this damn thing. I think yeah, I thought even the audio video. shots and stuff were, were, were still pretty good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The, uh, the POV stuff was excellent. And uh, I mean, there was a lot of parts there at the beginning where the, the camera was kind of shaky when it didn't really need to be like when they're riding on the road and stuff. But for the most part, the POV stuff, I mean, all that stuff was kind of for 1980. It was pretty it was pretty. I mean, I'm not going to say it was brand new, but it wasn't as as used as it was later in the 80s mm -hmm. uh, at that point. So it was uh, uh, it was it was a cool it was a cool way to, to do things and, and added to a new sense of mystery to who's killing things or who's killing the people and. And uh, yeah, I thought that was nice. It was a good, yeah. it was a good little twist. Yeah, and also build up scares too, because I feel like this movie did a really good job building up the scares, so where the scares are actually earned. Yeah, absolutely, man. So um, yeah, and sure. Speaking of like um, having like just what you have to work with, damn, did the effects look great in this movie? And that is one to the goats, like in my opinion, the goats of Tom Savini. Savini squad, baby. Oh, yeah. So party time. Yeah. yeah. Uh, right. You are, Brett. Uh, I think at the end of the day, uh, the, obviously, I think, again, 1980, not a lot of stuff, not a lot of gore has been, at, you know, preceded this. You know, Halloween mm -hmm. 78, not really any gore in that. The Texas Chainsaw 74, not a lot of gore in that. A little bit in Black Christmas, nothing crazy, though. Uh, so I, at this point, you're actually seeing these on screen deaths for, you know, one of the first times and they look good. They look great. I mean, even today, they still hold up better than a lot of the CGI does. Oh, yeah. Uh, you can oh, tell yeah. that. I don't think this is one of the, the first movies, too, where we kind of get this. Um, we start to get this crossover where they f they're starting to figure out like producers and studios are starting to figure out that. You know, if we put some blood and guts in there along with some titties, the teenagers are coming to the theater, buddy. You know what I mean? It's like if we <laughs> gore it and tit it, they will come. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> and that they, they, come, did. they did. Yeah, dude. And yeah. so it was like they figured out that was what was fun, man. And they they go for it, you know? Yeah, that's oh, yeah. that's exactly what they did. It was great. And it was a good, it was a great transition to the 80s. Obviously, the 70s was a lot of theater of the mind stuff, you know, Exorcist and and the omen and 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 stuff like that. And and mm -hmm. you know, you had a you had a lot of those. And then the eighties kind of transitions more so to, you know, slashing and gashing, baby, and and blood mm -hmm. and, and tits and everything in between. And and this was a good little centerpiece to to transition into that, I think. Yeah, yeah. and um and just with um just I guess that's why like really uh, how Friday the thirteenth became such a popular franchise because they kind of started that trend of actually showing the blood and guts and the TNA and all that. 
and people uh, just went off based upon that to build um, other franchises too and um, individual movies. But Friday the 13th really set that um, cornerstone because again, like Black Christmas uh, opened the door a little bit for Halloween. Halloween really busted the door and then uh, Friday the 13th really opened the door wider too, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Definitely. I think you're, I think you're spot on there, Bert. Uh, overall, I mean, it's a great time. I think, uh, oh yeah. What about the damn score, man? It's, it's fucking, and now the granted, it is a little bit of a ripoff of psycho at times. And, and that's well known. Everybody knows that, but I, overall, I thought the score and the soundscapes in general were fantastic. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, thing. man. The, oh, you can't beat the, the key, 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 man. Yeah. Or the key, 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 my, my, my. Yeah. That's what I was talking about. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's great. Of course it doesn't sound like that. It all, yeah, of course it sounds like, ch -ch -ch -ch. And it still does. I mean, I, I, I'll fight it you. Does, yeah, what I don't. <clears throat> yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, along with that, yeah, the score is just legendary and iconic. Um, and one way to, um, for your movie to be like recognized as one of the greatest of all time, uh, just uh, the particular uh, genre and the uh, subgenre, you got to have a great score. And Friday the 13th credit um, one that's just so epic, um, especially with that opening tile card with that. Um, music playing to the get you ready for a good movie. The old violins, man, it's great. It's yes. actually it's it's very yeah. solid. Okay. Violins and pianos or a horror movie's best friend, in my opinion. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I definitely. And it, I think it definitely served the uh, the atmosphere well, and uh, I love how they used it for um, for Pamela's you know little bit there. It's kind of like a, you can hear little bits and pieces, you know, as she's doing her kills and then you get more mm -hmm. of it, you know, at the end of that big reveal, I think it's a big payoff there. So I definitely think that was um, glad you brought that up. Cause yeah, that that's a huge part of it. Obviously oh, yeah. um, I'm going to fuck it. It's at uh, Harry Manfredini. Is that right? Or uh, Henry? That's it. That? Okay. Yeah. So um, yeah, great score. And um to pick kind of like um to go back of like to the great effects, the damn kills, especially that one on the snake, buddy. Yeah. Oh, God. no. Hey, dude, dude, Peter's watching. Yeah. Oh, God, that is. Yeah, that is. Uh, that's a hidden sick. That's been a hidden secret about that movie. Well, we fucked up, but oh, yeah. um, a hidden secret. Oh hell. Uh, well, Maybe let's just sliver you. sliver away from that conversation. So, uh, um, but the freaking kills, guys. So, so damn good. And I just, of course, uh, if there's one kill I have to talk about, it's freaking Jack's kill, Kevin Bacon's character. Oh, yeah. Um, with the whole uh, the little arrow. I think it's like an arrow or something, like um, mm -hmm. going through the throat right here. And uh, and the tube got stuck. So I think uh, one of the other special effects artists that was like underneath the bed had to literally blow into the tube where the blood shot out the way it did. And I think that is a happy accident uh, if that made the scene better. It definitely gets, it still makes me cringe seeing the blood uh, bubble up and then just spew. And oh man, it's just so gnarly and I love it. It's gnarly and it makes sense given the situation because he just had some blood flowing through his body because he was just getting the dirty in with your girl. So at that <laughs> point, like the blood yeah, is really buddy. starting to build up, you know, and, and it's getting back, it's trying to push back up to the brain at a rapid rate. <laughs> It just explodes out there, man. Yeah, buddy. It's still, and it, I mean, when we talked about this a little bit, but I mean, you can kind of tell, like, if you were to pause it now, you can kind of see, like, oh, okay, you can figure out how they did it. You know, you can see the the neck and all that shit. Mm -hmm. But I think if you're just watching it and, and like, if for someone who hadn't seen this before, I still think that they would get taken by surprise right there because it, it still holds up. Like, I, there's, movies today where there's like a cgi you know the head being chopped off and i and oh, this God. this has more of like a visceral effect than fucking uh than than the cgi kills you know what i mean mm -hmm. totally yeah and i think you can even see like uh a kevin bacon sells it so well like when they were blowing through that tube it almost looks like he's kind of like surprised like oh fuck when yeah it starts, when it starts shooting out you know so i i think that whole thing still still holds up uh, yeah and it was also uh what was so cool about that too that's like the very first time anybody's attempted a practical effect like that uh tom Savini actually uh came up with that particular technique uh, from oh, really? my understanding oh yeah and that's why i love that uh, particular kill even more it's great yeah. man and uh the one the throat slit cut uh kill from uh, in the woods from your girl Annie, at the yeah, Annie. 
Danny, yes. yes. Uh, Poor fucking Annie, man. I literally yeah. could not make it to Camp Crystal Lake to save her fucking life, right? 35 <laughs> minutes in one ride, 25 in another. Can't fucking make it there. But Ralph makes it there in 15 minutes on a fucking <laughs> And has enough time to go into the pantry, set up shop, and have a little party for himself in there before Brenda or fucking Alice or whoever it was walked in there. I can't even remember. Who does find him in there? I can't even I remember. believe Alice. Uh, uh, yeah. And I'll be damned if he didn't eat him some Oreos before they opened that door, too. He had an, he had an opportunity to get in there, a golden opportunity for some golden Oreos. But uh, I mean, why, why? I mean, you know, of all places, like, I got to warn these kids. Because they're snacks. Go. Oh shit! Yeah, right here in the he pantry. He was probably Holy high. Gods is definitely going to open this door, you know. And he like creeps in, creeps in there in the pantry, like it's perfect spot. They're definitely going to come in go. here. There's probably yeah. Pringles in there. Yeah. There's definitely some fucking blueberries. These, they should be in the fridge, but they put them in the pantry because they're camping. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's got to be Cheetos, the Cheeto puffs. Cheeto puffs are probably they probably get that big ass bucket from Sam's. Yeah, with, with, <laughs> a, with a, yeah, with the little cheese puffs that you could get in there, and then you could yeah. <laughs> So I think that's probably why. But again, yeah, the Alice kill is fantastic. Again, uh, great effects, close up throat slit for I don't know, might have been the first time ever. I don't know if I've saw one before that. But yeah, do you know how they did that one? They did. Uh, they created a fake ass neck, and then they. Yeah, they, but what, how um, Annie controlled it? Uh, you know how she does this, like kind of <laughs> like that motion. Uh, I think from what I understood, she pulls down. And then that's when the gash comes down, and that's when the blood spews out. Ah, I like it was, it. Oh, yeah, it's so damn cool, because throw slits always freaking bother the hell out of me, because that's just really too real for me. And that's yeah. like, if I if I do not want to die, I definitely don't want to go out like that. Yeah, it would be fun. It wouldn't be a lot of fun, I don't think. I've tried, yeah. So, uh, but yeah. yeah I, haven't, I, haven't, I haven't heard many good reviews. I'm going to try to avoid that altogether, I think. Yeah, totally. Oh, yeah. And then, uh, of course, um, I want to uh, freaking ask. Mar I want to ask Marcy a question about how she felt getting that axe right into the face. Another great practical effect, too. Yeah, that was a good kill. I like the way, like, you, I, it was kind of corny looking at, it, but at the same time, it's also kind of, I don't know, kind of scary with the with the light swinging around and stuff, and then the axe mm -hmm. in the face. I, I don't know. It was it was a, it was a nice little effect that they did. It was great, great kill, great kill. Oh yeah. Yeah, I think uh, the atmosphere served a, a, a little bit on that one as well with the light, uh, you know, dangling around and everything you were talking about. I think the atmosphere of that one is kind of what made it great more so than just the effect itself. Yeah, at least, at least what, what gave you the, the what, you know, inspires the reaction, I felt like. But it yeah, was I, solid. they're all great. Oh, yeah. And then, of course, um, the last kill I want to talk about real quick is uh, freaking... Uh, Pema Voorhees, um, she'll never be the head of Camp Crystal Lake game anytime soon. She'll never be a head chef. I'm not even. Uh, I'm not going to entertain this. What? Uh, man, is it just? Uh, are you just too headstrong? <clears throat> no, I just want to get out ahead of whatever it is that you might say. Ah, uh, see, I, <laughs> I knew I'd get one out of you. <laughs> yes, but yeah, guys, uh, the freaking uh, the head uh, cut off. Uh, which I'm uh, freaking lucky as swing, Alice. Good job, girl. Yeah. Oh God, I'm gonna hate on her here in a couple of minutes. But yeah, um, Pema Voorhees, uh, just that kill alone was so damn awesome, um, and a great effects too. Uh, and if you look really closely too, you can actually see uh, two uh, toothpicks uh, on her neck. Oh, that would have been. And, we should have. We should have known that before. That would have been genius for some of these skits that we knocked out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's how they did it. Uh, like with the whole chop up, they chop where the toothpicks lie, and that's how it eats the head easily fell off. That's a really, great idea. Yeah, we really could have used that when we were oh, hitting yeah. you. So, yeah. another great uh, Tom Savini kill effect. Definitely. Uh, well, yeah, a lot of great stuff here, guys. We've been talking about the good stuff for a while. Is there anything you don't like about this movie, or is it all just freaking positive? Uh, fuck, fuck Alice. What are you talking about, dude? I knew this was coming, I, dude. I'm I, waiting to fucking hear this. Fucking hate her, man. Like, um, she's it, a it, she's a terrible fighter. She freaking didn't help anybody because, like, uh, she's like, well, um, Bill, is there anything I could do? And Bill just tells her, like, no, you could lie down. And as he was about saying that, freaking Alice just lies on the couch and takes a nap. 
She does take a damn nap, and then whilst there's a serial killer running around, yeah. shutting lights off yeah. on people at the hey, archery range. You, you can. Okay, but it's, it's certain, maybe maybe if the other people would have taken a nap, Bert, they would have survived too. This was actually critical to her success. No, the other, she would have went with Bill. Pamela would have never attacked two people because she knew she wouldn't win the two on one situation. So fuck Alice for getting well, Bill. Well, then maybe 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 Bill should have taken a damn nap too. Bert, listen to this. This maybe this they should very... take a nap together. Exactly, they could have taken a nap, and I think they would have been much more successful if they did because that obviously gets your freaking it gets you more alert and ready to freaking party, man. And that's what they needed at that point. They needed to be alert. They didn't need to be freaking tired and shit because they probably haven't ate all day. A B. They didn't have any freaking Red Bulls back then, so there's no way they can get their energy back up that way. So the only way to do it is a damn nap, and they needed that, and that's why and, she won. And they were so tired, too, just because they were playing that very intense game of strip Monopoly. Ooh, that'll... Yeah, that'll wear, that'll you, wear you out, buddy. Yeah, so... Man, yeah, do y'all think Alice was going to do it? Because they made kind of like a joke in there, like Alice wasn't really going to take off her shirt. Do you really feel like uh, she was going to do it? Definitely. Bullshit. Alice is a puss. No, <laughs> she was smoking weed. Like she was breaking all the rules. She was definitely she would have done it. Oh, she did break everybody. a rule. Yeah, yeah, she even cheated the rules of the final girl. Fuck. She's a fucking rebel, dude. Yeah. Rebellious. Rebellious yeah, Alice yeah. is what they yeah, call let's her. Let's talk the about street. rebellious, okay? She couldn't set up a fucking gun to save her life. And so well, neither can dude, Luke. I'm getting, I'm, getting, I'm, getting, I'm getting no, let's not fucking talk about it. wrong place. So I'm getting a little choked up but talking about this. But, Your blood um, pressure is getting she, up there. Yeah, okay. Our ultimate line of defense is throwing a ball of yarn. What the fuck is that going to do? Get away from me, bitch. I'll yarn you to bed. <laughs> a panel was an old lady, okay? She probably does knit in her off time. I bet there was she another. probably needed that ugly-ass sweater she had on, too. There was an yeah, alternate looked- cut in there where she actually was like, here, hold my gun. Here, you know, take. Well, she, Alice, had the fucking gun. What did she? She had a knife. What did she have when yeah, she was no, she, there? no, she, she, she had, had a gun slapping. and she was straight was slap mode. She was straight slap mode at that point from Golden Eye sixty four. She was coming in freaking just smacking. Hey, her. dude, I used to fuck people up with nothing more than two fists on Golden Eye. I killed me a man or two on there. <laughs> yeah, that's what she was doing. She didn't need any weapons. She was just in there slapping fools, and she you had big head mode on. To have and a ball actually, of yarn and bond, uh, Betsy Alice, Palmer. not so much. Yeah, actually, and Betsy Palmer actually did slap the hell out of, um, on, I'm going to butcher the hell of this name, but um, Adrian King actually, like, really hitting her, and then Sean Cunningham had to stop Betsy Palmer go, hey, 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 you really can't, you, you, you're not supposed to hit her, and Betsy Palmer going, why not? Yeah, the constant <laughs> pro, buddy. She was she was in the fucking zone, dude. Yeah. And, like, I, I, I did, do you know what I would have done if I was Sean Cunningham? Her in this room. Yeah, if I were Sean Cunningham, I'd be like, um, Adrian, like, stop being a bitch and just take a slap or two. Like, damn. Your character sucks anyway, bitch. Just take it. <laughs> yeah, just take it. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, obviously things... I, I, about the time she takes a nap, things slow down quite a bit. This pacing is awful in that act. It's that, uh, that's my biggest complaint about the whole thing is like you get, you know, you get riled up and then it just kind of slows down. You know what I mean? Yeah, she, not only she takes a nap, she wakes up and she makes a damn pot of coffee after. And she's like, oh, I've had a couple little minutes of sleep. It's time for me to wake up. I'm like, you just yeah. had a power nap. You don't need to double down on your on your, on your your awakeness and the alertness. You're good to go. Yeah, but yeah again, and she didn't even put the coffee lid on, right, if you look at the scene. Mm-hmm. Of course not, dude. She's of course so not. inconsiderate. Because she's still drowsy from her nap. We're still missing the other point where she's making a pot of coffee. And motherfuckers are still dying outside the door. You know what I mean? Like just right outside the door. There's like a hundred bodies over there. And she's like, oh, I'm so glad <laughs> I got my Z's in. You know, what can I do now? Ooh, coffee. yeah. You know? Yeah. How could the fuck can you fall asleep when you find a bloody axe on a bed? I wouldn't be exactly. freaking sleeping. Yeah, I wouldn't be either, man. I think that was a little silly. <laughs> I mean, it's like, okay, here's okay. Oh, they're making, oh, they're playing games with us. No, there, there's, there's people getting their heads chopped off out here, and this is the evidence. Yeah. So, oh, it's frustrating because, like, and what's even more frustrating? Um, um, I really wanted Annie or Brenda to be the final girl, uh, because I enjoyed their characters more. Like, I understand why they didn't do Annie as the final girl because they wanted to set her up and do something different. And let her be one of the first kills. 
Uh, I feel like they just did that just like as a shock factor reaction, even though I kind of didn't like that because I was really enjoying the Annie character. And I loved Brenda, too. And so she would have been another good choice as the final girl. I agree. I, like I, I, I don't think I hated Annie as much as you did, but I definitely think she's like the weakest of. Oh, you um, mean Alice? Uh, uh, excuse me. Yes, Alice. Um, don't hate her as much as you did, but uh yeah, but she she was definitely the weakest of the bunch. And yeah, I kind of get her character arc and everything. So I wonder if like it wasn't just the performance, but I don't I really don't think that it was. I think I think that um, Adrian King probably did as much as she could with what was there. I, I just think that it was kind of she was just a pussy. She was just written that way, you know? And I was like, <laughs> what? God, that's an <clears throat> understatement. I think she was serviceable at the end of the day, but <clears throat> Uh, yeah, I mean, I obviously one, definitely one of the weaker uh, final girls in the franchise. I think. I mean, there's definitely plenty out there that's stronger. So, oh, yeah. yeah, at the end of the day, I mean, I, I can't say you're wrong, Bert. Uh, yeah, she's decent, but she's not great. No, and then um, I, I, I just don't understand the entire time why freaking creepy Steve is trying to hit on her. Because Steve's got a mustachio, and he's got a mustachio a question. And yeah, where the gotta, yeah, where the fuck is his shirt too? Because I didn't want to look at that. Hey, I did, buddy. Those jorts and those fucking long socks psh, all day long. I told you what the title was in Canada. <laughs> now, but there is that weird scene at the very beginning whenever she's like holding, whenever he's, uh, she climbs on the ladder and like holds the gutter up or whatever. And he's just like, Yeah, straight creeping. Yeah, he's just like staring at her ass the whole time. And it's just kind of like, This guy's, you know, you hate that motherfucker right off the bat. Mm hmm. Yeah, and he freaking leaves the counselors there to go what? To go to a damn diner to have some good old cake or something? I think he was going to a leather bar. <laughs> yeah. And on the way, he, he ended up at a diner. <clears throat> and obviously, at that diner, the, the meal and the coffee is only about $3.60, I think is what it came out to. And I was like, you know, I, I couldn't leave either. If I could get a slice of pie and a little bit of hot coffee, I'd be staying there too. Oh, yeah. Hell yeah. That's it, uh, so that's it. We got 25 minutes worth of positives and two minutes worth of negatives. Um, and one Alice rant. Oh, yeah. So, um, okay, yeah. Uh, just uh, kind of like wrapping this uh, video up. Uh, what is your favorite kill of the movie? I know we discussed um, some of the big highlight ones, but which one is your actual favorite? I'll take a swing at this one, fellas. I'm going to tell you guys the old oregano. I still go with the bacon kill. Jack, mm -hmm. I think is his character's name. Is that right? Yeah, Jack. Jack, yeah. Uh, still go with that one uh, just because I think that it still holds up uh, and it still gives you, you know, it's, there's still a reaction to it, I guess. Mm -hmm. You know, even though, you, I mean, if you look closely, you know, you can kind of see the deception there, but it's, um, I, you know, it, it still holds up. Still, I still have a reaction to it, I guess. So I, I go with that one. Oh yeah, and uh, I'm gonna just uh, I'm gonna go with the same thing with uh, Jack's kill. Uh, definitely, freaking just makes me cringe every time I watch it. No matter how many times I watch it, and as to quote a famous uh, Cleveland uh, from Family Guy, "Oh, that's just nasty." <laughs> I concur, gents, and I. It's so good they did it twice. They had to get Jason one of the same kills in part three, and I think it's because it's a cool kill. You're laying under the bed, and you get freaking stabbed to the throat after a good time. Uh, and uh, yeah, I mean, it's good. Oh, and um, just without bringing up, we gotta talk our our boy Jason from the water at that yeah, very that, last thing. Great effects, dude. Great effects, yeah, great effects and great jump scare. That scared the hell out of me the first time I watched it in your uh dad's movie room, Brad. Um, and the whole sound, and I thought happily ever after. If and freaking uh, Jason comes out of the water and gets Alice out. Uh, was scared to death, but I was also extremely happy because I thought that bitch finally got what she deserved. You gotta get it, bitch. Did it scare? <laughs> did it scare you just as bad whenever uh, Jason actually jumped out of the water and came after you? And at the at the beginning of this episode, the real Jason, the real oh, Jason, dude. Yeah. That yeah, dude. I don't know. I don't know how I even escaped that scenario. <laughs> I thought he got me. He did get you. Uh, man, it, it was, it man. was those claws, man. Hold those they, claws, they man. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah! Uh, but all right, we can uh, we can rock and roll with the rating if you'd like. All right, let's do it, man. Uh, Chris, how would you rate this bad boy? Hmm. 
I think on this one, I go with a Fuhrer. A four? A foot? Mm -hmm. Okay, sorry. I can't speak waiver language. I guess I should probably say four. Yeah, the way that I meant for that to come out a little sideways, but I guess I kind of said Fuhrer. <laughs> All right. Oh, uh, yeah, and to translate that, because that's actually my same score as well, I'm going to give this a four as well. Um, and it's just a really great um, slasher movie if I really did change the slasher genre. Hmm. yes it is i'm gonna give it a 3.75 same reasons uh the pacing issues there towards the end really hold it down a little bit for me uh at the end of the day but i still a really enjoyable film and a classic in the genre fantastic stuff but i was going into toshi station to pick up some power converters hell yeah so um guys we did it man um uh, with this is a great way to start off the friday the 13th franchise by talking about the original we got uh 10 more or uh, yeah, 10 more of these bad boys left. That's right. Yes, we do. I'll let them yeah. know right now. We ain't going to stand for no weirdness out here. <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> not. So um, thank you for uh, tuning in to this one. So let us uh, let me carry you all home so you got something for next week to look forward to when we do Friday the 13th Part 2. So guys... What did you all think about Friday the 13th from 1980? Do you love it? Did you think of our, um, it's such a great uh, slasher movie? Or um, do you have some problems with it, especially Alice? Let us know in that comic section down below, and let's get that discussion rolling. And if you want to find a good reels, you can do so by finding us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Letterboxd, Snapchat, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and TikTok. Those links are going to be in the description for you to find down below. Absolutely, and be sure to like this video, share, and subscribe, and of course, ring that bell, ding, 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 so you know when that next Friday the 13th review is up and ready. And we'll see you again next week at the camp. Bring your own sleeping bag, though, because we don't want to share. Have a good night. And Tell love your, you love your mama. Mm-hmm. Call her and tell her you love her. <laughs>